Welcome to easyliving.com. I'm Jan Herdman and today we're talking about health and in particular LASIK eye surgery with Dr. Millicent Grimm from Gough Eye Centre. Thank you Dr. Grimm for joining us. Can you just tell us a little bit what is LASIK? What does it do? Hmm. LASIK is a surgery that is meant to help you see without the need of your glasses or contact lenses mm -hmm. and <clears throat> in probably 85% to 90% of time if you're a good candidate that's possible. So, so what does it involve? Is, I mean I understand is it taking the surface of the cornea off? The definition of LASIK as a procedure, there are other vision correction surgeries as well, but in LASIK you lift a very very thin slither of the surface of the cornea, reshape the surface so as to bolt your lens value into the cornea and you bring that layer back so it comes like a cling form back onto the cornea, smooths down Mm -hmm. and then heals mostly around the edges mm -hmm. and around three months time it is so tightly healed that you need something to lift it again. Really? So uh, that's the basic uh, definition of LASIK. Is that a, a lengthy surgery? Is it? Is it Anywhere from five to ten minutes busyness with the eye, of which the laser will spend a uh, quarter minute, half a minute, a minute, usually not much more than a minute of actual lasering. The preparation and the aftercare, making sure everything works very well, the creation of the flap, the repositioning of the flap takes up the rest of the time. Goodness, is it painful? Uh, no, it's more discomfort. Uh, after, uh, well, in the creation of the flap, we usually have to create a, a heavy pressure on the eyes that feels like a headache. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst. And then the flap is created, the vacuum is normally released, and then uh, the surface of the eye gets numbed, so it doesn't feel like a scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Afterwards, you have a grittiness and a weepiness because the cornea was uh, yeah. disturbed for around four to six hours, and most of the time you're done. Okay. So is there is there a range of corrections, is that the, the right term, or, or, or um, you know you have people with a, uh, needing a large correction, those that, that don't need a large correction, is there an ideal candidate or is, can anybody have LASIK? The laser machines will usually do as low as a half diopter, you know these oh, numbers really? that you get, yeah. 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 Uh, upwards because the rest is normally possible to fudge just by normal focusing. Okay. Yeah. So a uh, half diopter upwards, uh, currently acceptable for LASIK surgery is up to minus six, minus eight, pushing more if you have enough tissue because you remove tissue and you need to leave enough tissue for the dome of the cornea to stay and to keep its shape, right? So uh, astigmatism is an additional factor uh, which also uses more cornea, so if there's quite a bit of astigmatism you don't want to do as much okay. sphere. So there are limits for safety's sake mostly. That's for minus corrections. For plus corrections, um, the acceptable limits are up to plus four, pushing four and a half, again with an amount of astigmatism to take care of. In plus corrections it's very important how steep or flat the cornea is because you have to make it steeper yeah. and there's a point where you make it too steep for good quality vision. So you need to know where you start and on the minus corrections you have a lot more leeway for the size of correction you can do. So what are, when we say plus and minus, when, what, what about the when you get to an age where your eyes start to deteriorate? Mm -hmm. Is that is that something that LASIK is suitable for? I mean, how, how long does it last? Mm -hmm. um, and because I understand once your eyes start to deteriorate, it does it over a period of time and continues for... We talk about two concepts here. Yes. The one is LASIK that, if, especially if you're younger, wants to correct your distance vision. Yes. Because with normal distance vision, a person who's a zero that never uses glasses is good with perfect distance vision, reading vision up until 45. So if you're young enough, that's what will be done for you. Mm -hmm. Every person, even in his correction, 45 onwards, his correction doesn't help him for reading, short arm okay. syndrome, right? So LASIK depends on what you plan to do. You can 
like some folks in those times start to work with contact lenses, correcting one for far, correcting one for near. Mm -hmm. LASIK can be done to do can be done to do that as well. Right. And you need to uh, one want it. Uh, H is better to be in the H bracket where that will make sense for you. Uh, so it depends on how you see your future with your eyes. A person who really needs 3D nearby doesn't like to do it. He wants full correction and therefore wants to use his you know both eyes in the 3D fashion. But where that doesn't matter, where you're already starting to play with contact lenses using monovision, that can be done in, la in LASIK surgery. I'm an example of that. I have had LASIK in one eye yes. and it's good for distance. I didn't want to give up my near vision in the other eye, just left it alone because it had an ideal uh, set of numbers and um, I'm independent and will probably stay independent of glasses and contact lenses. So does that, does, does the, the correction stay permanent does it does it decrease at all over time or? the that's why it's so important to know if your eyes are suitable <coughs> in the beginning because if it's a well-shaped well-formed enough tissue cornea uh, it should stay permanent uh, if it's a relatively weak cornea the shape is not really ideal there is the potential that removing the tissue to do the reshaping can weaken it further and that may be <coughs> one of the um, undesirable after effects uh, that you need to be aware of beforehand mm -hmm. so we need to um, sift those potential patients out that they don't get done uh, unnecessarily. Yeah. So an ideal patient, ideal circumstances, every reading is ticking the box. Yeah. There's no reason why it shouldn't be permanent and yeah. doing well in the long term. Right. Well that's great, all that technical information which I think is fantastic. But for those who are watching, listening to this, who are wearing glasses, who would like to get rid of the glasses, how do they get over the, the fear mm -hmm. of going from where they are to doing something fairly radical mm -hmm. like LASIK. How, what would you say to them? How would you tell them it's okay? I think it's important how much you want it and other times how much the glasses or contact lens interfere with what you need to do. Right. Uh, now and then there's a um, occupational factor like fire and emergency uh, workers who cannot have the hassle with glasses and contact lenses and they would get not necessarily LASIK, they may get another type because LASIK can be a difficulty as well. But uh, the, the depends on your occupation, depends on your sport uh, preferences, uh, how your lifestyle is how uh, important it is for you to get it done. Mm -hmm. Even more important is to know whether your eyes are suitable. If you're not a suitable candidate, there's really no question. Then you have to use alternatives and make that work for you. But uh, I think the first thing, foremost thing, is to establish are you a suitable candidate? Mm -hmm. And if you are a suitable candidate but still a uh, little bit um, indecisive, uh, find out more, also find out what is involved, how good the care will be, um, where the aftercare is even more important. Mm -hmm. Find out if um, all the circumstances of your eyes work well, are they, uh, is the tear film working well enough, are you going to have dry eyes afterwards? You need to ask all those questions that make you uh, uncomfortable mm -hmm. and have that clear in your mind. Uh, and I guess that's what we're doing here, is trying to um, educate our, our viewers so that they can have an in, make an informed choice yes. from where I am today with my glasses um, and I, I want to get rid of it, what do I need to know, how big is my desire to go through the process and that's what we're here for. One more question, mm. someone who's interested in having LASIK, how do they determine who to go to? Is there, is there a list of doctors who, with different qualifications? Um, how do they know who's a good doctor and who's not? I think very important, like any project that you tackle, is the preparation. Yeah. Find out uh, among your friends who have it done and who have done well. Find out, uh, look at the websites when that is available, what is offered and how informative it is, how it is explaining the process. And also find out what is involved in uh, what is offered. In, in this process of doing LASIK with this particular unit, mm -hmm. uh, are you only going to quickly check me, do my LASIK and I'm done and you never see me again? Or do you do real preparation? Do you find out what can make the whole project fail mm -hmm. because of 
of conditions that goes undetected in a quick, quick test, mm -hmm. uh, and then what's involved in the aftercare. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> in our situation, we chose to do a very regular um, uh, set of, of, of uh, review visits or follow-up visits, yes. and we see the patients on day one, week one, month one, month three, and uh, six and twelve and that gives us enough time after the first three months that we achieve what we plan to do and if any tweak like we said in, in five or ten or fifteen percent of persons need a tweak um, then there's enough time by the time a year is over to complete the process and to see the project yeah. off as, uh, as uh, successful. Well, I guess that's, that's the real thing, isn't it? That you do need to do your homework, your research, and testimonials, I guess, are the, are, are the best proof. Mm -hmm. um, find out, speak to other people who've had it done, who have they been to, um, and how long have people been around? That's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, thank you again. Welcome. Welcome. So once again, thank you for joining us with easyliving.com. I'm Jan Hoodman and see you next time.